Hi, my name is Milon and welcome to another video in the Clean Architecture with Domain Driven Design series. Today we will continue to work on the domain layer. I will introduce you to the concept of entities in Domain Driven Design. We already made an introduction to this topic in the previous video of this series. In case you missed it, make sure you go back and rewatch the previous video because it will be easier for you to follow this one. Domain Driven Design comes from a book written by Eric Evans where he talks about tackling complexity in the heart of software. Among other things, in his book he introduces a concept called Called an entity. To quote from the book, many objects are not fundamentally defined by their attributes, but rather by their continuity and identity. Continuity means that we need to be able to track an object through the lifetime of our application, and identity means that we can uniquely identify each object in our system. Another way to put it is that an object primarily defined by its identity is called an entity. And yes, I know that it rhymes. I'm going to move on to the code and show you an example of how to implement an entity. I already have four entities defined in my domain project. These are member, gathering, invitation and attendee. And let's for example take a look at the gathering entity. You can see that I have a GUID property here called ID and this property represents the identity of my gathering entity. What I want to do now is to introduce a new concept to the domain project. I'm going to create a base class that all entities will implement. I will first create a new folder which I will call primitives and over time we will be adding more than just the entity class here. I'll create a new class and call it entity. I'll clean up the namespace. I want to use the file scope namespace and remove the unused using statements. I want the class to be public and I also want it to be abstract because I don't want anyone to create an instance of the entity class. You can only create an instance of a class inheriting from entity. The one and only thing that we need in the entity class is the ID property. So I'm going to go ahead and define it. Because this is an abstract class, I'm going to go ahead and create a protected constructor that the classes inheriting from the entity will use in order to pass in the ID and set its value. Another important thing to consider is that once an entity is created and it has an ID assigned to it, we cannot change this ID throughout the lifetime of the entity's existence. To implement this constraint, I will change the property setter to be, instead of set, I will use the new keyword available in C-sharp that is called init. Init functions similar like set, the only difference is you can only set the value once at the point in time the object is initialized. And additionally, I'm going to make the init private so that it can only be set from inside of the entity class. Now, when defining the entity, we said that an entity is defined by its identity. So for two entities to be considered equal, they need to have the same ID. To support this, I'm going to add two additional things to the entity class. One is I'm going to override the object equals method on our entity. And I'm going to say first, if the object being passed in, is null, then just return false, uh, we don't consider them equal. Then if the type of the object that is passed in is not equal to the type of the current object, we will return false. Otherwise, if the object that is being passed in is not an entity, is not inheriting from entity, then we will again return false. And I'm also going to use this feature where I can capture a variable while performing a type check. At this point, I know that the object passed in is not null, is the, it is the same type as the current type, and it is also an entity. So I can safely say entity id equals id of the current object, and basically here we are saying these two entities are the same if their id property has the same value. You can also go ahead and override the get hash code. This can be useful when you are creating a collection of entity types. I'm just going to say return id get hash code 
One additional thing that you can do when implementing a custom get hash code value is to multiply by some prime number. For example, I'm going to use 41 here, but leaving ID get hash code is also fine. I said we were going to do two things. One was override the object equals method. These two things did not include overriding the get hash code. So the second thing that I want to do is implement the I equatable interface on the entity and pass in the entity as the generic argument. And I'm going to say implement missing members. The only member that we need to implement is the equals method coming from the I equatable interface. And I'm going to do a similar thing as before. I will check if the other object is null, then return false. If the other object's type is different from the current object's type, then we return false. Otherwise, we return true if the other object's ID is equal to the ID of the current object. While we're here, we may as well go ahead and implement the static equals and the not equals operators. So I will say public static bool because it's an equality operator equals and it accepts two nullable entity arguments, the first and the second entity. The implementation is going to be return true if the first object is not null and the second object is not null and the first object is equal to the second object. And here we are using the equals method that we just implemented. I will also add the not equals operator. It accepts again the first and the second entity. And I'm just going to return the negation of the equals operation that we just defined. And I'm pretty happy with this empty entity implementation. Just to recap what we implemented so far, we added the ID property, which represents the identity of our entity. We implemented the equals and not equals operator. We implemented the equals method from the iEquatable interface. We implemented the equals method coming from the object class. And we additionally made an override of the get hash code and provided our own implementation. This is the base implementation for an entity that I use in most of my projects when I'm applying domain-driven design. If I need some additional behavior, I will also add it here as I'm progressing with the project. Now what we need to do is go over to our entities and make them inherit from our base entity class. So I'm going to start with the gathering entity and move on with the rest of them one by one. So inherit from entity. I'm also going to mark this class as sealed at this point because I don't expect it to be inherited by any other classes. And here we need to pass the ID to the protected constructor of our base class. So I'll say base and pass in the ID. I will also remove setting the ID from here. And I'm also going to remove the ID property defined here because it's hiding the one defined in the base class. All right, now I'm going to update the member class. So inherit from entity, make the class sealed, delete the ID. And here we don't have a constructor, so I'm going to quickly create one. I'll use auto completion. And we need to pass in the ID, which we'll add as the first parameter. Okay, that's looking good. Let's go update the invitation class. First, we have to inherit from the entity abstract class. I will make the invitation sealed because I don't expect to have different types of invitations going forward and pass in the ID to the base constructor and also delete the existing ID property because it's hiding the one in the base class. So I showed you how we can define a base entity class that we can use for implementing domain-driven design in our domain project. And I updated the few existing entities that we have to inherit from this base entity class. In the next video, I want to show you how we can do domain validation. I'll give you two options and leave it up to you to decide which one you want to implement.
This was a brief introduction to the entity concept in domain-driven design. We are going to use this as the foundation for exploring domain-driven design in some of the future videos. So if you like this video, make sure to leave it a like, subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of my future videos. And until next time, stay awesome.